by Edwina Gately. This is my prayer. <laughs> that though I may not see, I be aware of the silent God who stands by me. That though I may not feel, I be aware of the mighty love which doggedly follows me. That though I may not respond, I be aware that God, my silent, mighty God, waits each day, quietly, hopefully, persistently, waits each day and through each night for me, for me alone. Lord, it is night. The night is for stillness. Let us be still in the presence of God. It is night after a long day. What has been done has been done. What has not been done has not been done. Let it be. The night is dark. Let our fears of the darkness of the world and of our own lives rest in you. The night is quiet. Let the quietness of your peace enfold us, all who are dear to us and all who have no peace. The night heralds the dawn. Let us look to a new day, new joys, new possibilities. In your name we pray. Amen. from Psalm 145. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is loving to everyone and his compassion is over all his works. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power that the peoples may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. The Lord is faithful in all his words and merciful in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all those who fall. He lifts up those who are bowed down. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
A number of years ago, I saw a one image cartoon in the New Yorker magazine. It was an image of a man standing beside his cat, looking down at him sternly, wagging a punitive finger. And the caption under the image read in dialogue quotation marks, never think outside the box. I think I find this cartoon so funny now that I own Luna, a cat, and once in a while I too have to think, to say to her, never think outside the box, little girl. But more so, I love this cartoon because it reminds me how easily I can slip into living my life in a box, a box of fixed expectations and limited dreams, which creates a life in monochrome predictability. I don't think this is the life God dreams for us. God creates, and if we are created in the image of God, we too, by our very nature, are creative beings. There's so much evidence of this in life, most literally in the act of participating in the mystery of creating and raising children. But those, for those among us who have not done so like me, creativity is most often experienced as I take out the ingredients from my fridge to make my evening meal, spend time crafting a piece of writing, find an original solution to a problem in my home, or how I sequence and plan the events within my daily schedule. All of these and more can be known and used as the clay out of which we form and create our lives. Sometimes though, we need a reminder to think outside of our boxes. And this is what happened to me. Earlier this spring, as the coronavirus pandemic was just getting underway in Maine, a colleague of mine recommended the book, Trauma Stewardship, an everyday guide to caring for self while caring for others. Pastoral care is one of my passions and I'm interested in trauma studies in particular. I thought this book might give me some insight for ministering during a pandemic and taking care of myself while I care for others during what's bound to be a very challenging time. The book addresses self-care for ER doctors and ICU nurses, environmental scientists, chaplains, social workers, race equality activists, and anyone whose work benefits humankind, living things, or the planet. It's got this broad sweeping scope of people it's trying to reach out to. And this kind of work, while deeply rewarding, also carries with it an unacknowledged toll on one's spirit and heart. The book aims to offer some constructive strategies that will help people sustain themselves so that they can keep engaging in whatever noble cause they are pursuing to have a positive healing impact on our world over the long haul. Some of the suggestions are things like daily practices for centering oneself, like a daily prayer practice or regular exercise, or for cultivating gratitude, such as name three things you're grateful for at bedtime, or ways to truly rest and lay down one's work for Sabbath time. Remember, you're not in this work alone. It's not totally up to you. Thanks be to God. Each chapter ends with some reflective questions to help readers apply the content to their situation. One chapter's question was, if I weren't doing what I'm doing now, what would I love to do? I thought immediately, that's easy. I'd be training to be a spiritual director. I'd be in that program in Nebraska, the one that does the ones that most, the people I most admire in this field recommend to me and that I could never do because of its residential component, the three summers it takes to complete it and the cost of tuition. Bingo, did you hear it? Did you hear the boxes in that thought? The one I could never do because of location, time, and money. You might be wondering what is spiritual direction, so I'll pause to give a little clarity. Spiritual direction is a ministry where one person helps another to deepen their relationship with God so that they are more attentive to the active participation of God in their lives and can live out and live into the consequences of that deepening intimacy with God. 
It's a spiritual companioning with others as they cultivate their relationship with the holy. It's a kind of sacred listening alongside another, sometimes over many years. It's a ministry that a priest might do in addition to their work in a parish. It's not something usually someone does full time unless they work and live in a monastery or a retreat center, and even then it's usually only part of the work. Being a spiritual director is something I've felt called to do since I first experienced it myself, and I learned the name for this kind of pastoral work. I took several classes at Yale Divinity School and topics that would prepare me someday to do further training to be a spiritual director. And one of my student jobs in seminary even was organizing the spiritual direction sessions at my seminary, which allowed me to get to know the various directors and to support some of the retreats that were offered while I was a student. Truly, this program was one of the reasons I went and chose to go to Yale Divinity School. And then when I saw that there was a student job related to retreats and spiritual direction, I said, I want to have that job while I'm here. And so I pursued it. During my final year, I went, met with one of my past professors, an expert in this field of spiritual direction, to get her short list of programs I should consider when the time was right for further training. So there I was in this ordinary moment reading a book, and I heard God's clear, soft voice expressing my heart's desire. And I saw the box that was trapping me, assumptions about time and place and cost. Maybe they're offering their classes online because of the pandemic, I wondered. Let's find out. So I picked up my computer, I googled the graduate program, reread about the courses, and sent off an inquiry. And I heard back. They were only offering classes online. They were still accepting applications and I could start with just one course at a time this summer if I got accepted into the program. Doable, I thought, and talked with my husband about my interest and the expense. And then I hustled. The application essay was probably the easiest I've ever written in my life. I requested my letters of recommendation from my bishop, that professor, and my spiritual director, and they sent them off lickety split and each sent me a affirming reply that this is a next and fitting step for me in ministry. Then I waited and I prayed and I got in to this certificate program in spiritual direction and directed retreats at Creighton University. And it's been great. I'm learning so much. It's deepening my faith and feeding my heart. It's been life-giving to pursue this dream from my office in my home in the hours on either side of the workday. So this program that I thought I could not do because of time and location will actually be half completed by mid-December from home if I take a third class this fall. And this program that I thought I could not do because of the expense will have $2,000 of the tuition cost covered by the diocese from a fund designated for clergy professional development. And it's been possible actually because of the pandemic, not in spite of it. And more importantly, it's possible because I listened to that still small voice speaking to me inside and I responded creatively, not trapped within those boxes. Thanks be to God.
Prayers for ourselves and others in the season of Pentecost. Loving God, in faithfulness, we pray to you that you will rouse us from sleep and make us alert to anticipate the nearness of your presence. Stirring God, may we follow closely in your lead. That this may be a season to discover your word in the light of this world, your touch in every human embrace, and your love in every gesture of sacrifice between us. Generous God, redeem our anxieties and fears, turn them into new hope and confidence. That your grace may bring our hearts to fresh awareness and make us see with uncovered eyes Christ, who suffers with his world in its troubles. Seeing God, give us eyes to see beyond the obvious. That they may know Christ's healing, wholeness, confidence, and peace, especially those we name now, silently or aloud. Marjorie, Gracie and Gary, Harvey and Joe, and for Betsy Salsenthal and all who mourn her passing. Others? Active God, renew us as people of service and compassion. May the works of our lives demonstrate your love. May we recognize in our humble gathering for prayer and thanksgiving that you are with us here to inspire our songs with your dreams. Enlivening God, may we accept the gifts of your spirit that your coming into the days of our own human history may always be new and brim with light to drive darkness away. Hopeful God, refresh in all people the will for good, the capacity for forgiveness, and the longing for peace. God of grace, help us in the midst of things we cannot understand to trust in the knowledge and love of you and each other. And give courage and faith to those who are bereaved, that they may have the strength to meet the days ahead in the comfort of hope. Receive our prayers, and in your grace, answer them as may be best for us and your people. Amen. Amen. God of wonder, you have called us to know you and to make you known. Grant that we may walk in your presence, your love in our hearts, your truth in our minds, your strength in our wills, until at the end of our journey, we know the joy of our homecoming and your peace. Amen. As the day lengthens, dear God, teach us to walk in your love. While we strive to be faithful in word and deed, teach us to love one another. While we live as a part of your creation, teach us to love this good earth in all ways. While we offer our prayers this hour, stir us to real action and sacrifice for the justice and peace you insist upon. With grateful hearts, teach us to trust in your love. Amen. Amen. Let us unmute ourselves and say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in Father heaven, in heaven hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come. Your, your will be done, done. On, on earth as, as it is, is in heaven. In heaven. Give, give us today our daily bread. bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Save, Save us from, from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also with you. you. Peace. Peace all. <laughs> Well, good evening. We have just a few announcements. I wondered if Matt would share a bit about the second class that he's offering. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Matt Roberts, the summer seminarian, and um, Linda Card and I, who is also on this chat, Linda, if you want to wave, uh, we are co-hosting a, uh, a facilitation of a conversation called Theology and Racial Justice. Um, and so the way the class works is um, send me an, uh, an email if you would like to be signed up. And then on Monday or Tuesday, I'll send out uh, an email with some, some ways to prepare. But really, um, we will start our session by watching a video together. And then we'll have some time to unpack it. And then we will go into breakout rooms. Um, I'm all about the breakout rooms uh, these days. Uh, so we will have about 30 minutes of discussion in the breakout rooms. Linda will be in one and I will be in the other. And then we will come back and share what we've learned and what we hope to do and where we wanna go next week. Um, so if you are interested in that, a class on theology and racial justice, uh, just shoot me an email and I would be happy to have you along for the ride. Um, and also, same for Narnia. Narnia has been going on. We're, we're reading Voyage of the Dawn Treader for Tuesday. Um, if you're curious about that, just send me an email as well. Great. Thank you. And thank you to you and Linda for offering that. I think it'll be a great conversation. So it's good. Um, I wanted to just share that there's a uh, team of people who've been asked by the Vestry to look at our um, COVID-19 kind of protocols for using the grounds and the building. Um, we met Oh, we've been meeting almost weekly on Thursdays, and um, we hope to soon have something to share about groups that would like to meet outside um, and, and guidelines um, for that. So, um, and then, uh, let's see, uh, I'd like to thank David for serving as the Zerger, the kind of Zoom master um, behind the scenes this evening. Thank you. Um, if that's something that you would be willing to serve in, we need people to help on this team. And it basically, um, Joel is doing all the music pieces. So it's more about muting and unmuting, help with recording, um, just making sure all the readers are accounted for that kind of thing. So if you could, um, if you're interested in that, uh, please uh, reach out to me and I'll um, help you feel comfortable doing that role and get you in the rotation of that. And then lastly, I just want to share that um, I prayed for the family and those who love Betsy Saltonstall, who is a um, woman in our parish who passed away uh, this past week. And her family uh, and I are working to organize a memorial service over Zoom, which will be on Saturday, July 25th in the morning. And um, the family um, wants the people who would like to be there to be able to attend. And Betsy is someone who lived at Piper Shores. And so uh, Zoom is the platform that will allow the people uh, who knew her to attend. Um, as you know, uh, Piper Shores residents are unable to leave the grounds. And so this makes lots of sense. And then we're gonna have a family uh, graveside burial. So um, I'd like to just share that. And if you need that information again, just reach out to me. and. Um, we'll figure out a way to distribute the link as well. So, so wonderful to be together and to see all your faces during the piece. I always scroll through all the screens to, to see all of you. So let's have our opening, or sorry, closing hymn.
God's blessing be with you. Christ's peace be with you. The Spirit's outpouring be with you now and always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Thank mm -hmm. you.